Today we're talking about DUI blood testing and specifically how they test a blood sample. They do it using a method called gas chromatography. And in this video, we're going to explain briefly how it works. Now it's a complicated process. And so we're just gonna boil it down to the fundamentals so you can get an understanding of how it works because it's pretty interesting actually. So the first thing to note is that they're actually not testing your blood. They're testing what's called headspace. So they're testing the air above your above your blood so they take a vial of your blood they heat it up it will equalize with the air then they test the air and what they do is they put it through a big machine that has a big coil inside of it and they just run it through this coil over and over and over until stuff spits out of the other end of it and so let's let's take a look at how that works let's diagram it out so let's say that we have a big hose just like a garden hose so something that's in your front yard or your backyard. We have this big hose and it's all wrapped around and we have all these coils. And when we're talking about a crime lab, it could be 30 meters. It's a big long hose that's just coiled up and they put it inside this big box. And what they do is they take one end of the hose and they're gonna be dumping a bunch of stuff into this hose. This is really the air sample that's in the blood vial. But let's stick with the hose analogy like from your front yard and we have a funnel at the top of it. And what we're doing is we're gonna put a bunch of stuff in there. So let's say that we have, let's use candy. So we have some M&Ms here, these are the greens. And we wanna put some other stuff in there. So we have some Skittles, those will be blue. And we wanna put something a little bit strange that's not really round and spherical we want to put in some starbursts okay so all candies that i eat too much of and so we fill we fill the top of this funnel with all of these different candies and what we're going to do is we're going to put another solution and in this case we'll say it's water and we're going to force all of these different items through this tube and so all of the Skittles and the Starburst and the M&Ms and whatever else I put in there, they're all gonna go through this tube over and over and over and over and over again. And then at the other end of the tube, stuff's gonna start to come out. But because these different items are shaped differently, these different candies have different densities, they have different shapes, they have different sizes, some are spherical, some are square, some are thick, some are not some are porous, some aren't. They have all these different properties to each different candy. So as they go through this tube, some are gonna come out faster than others. So the Skittles will come out maybe before the M&Ms or the Starburst because they're round and they have a lot of surface area and they're kind of clunky and jagged. They're gonna come out dead last. And so if we don't know anything about what we put in at the top here, but we know what comes out at certain times. So if we know that Starbursts come out because we've tested this many times. We've only put Starburst through here and we know what time they come out. And we only put Skittles through here and we know what time those come out. And when we put them all in together, we know that they come out at certain times. So if we're looking at our watch and we're saying, okay, Starburst should be coming out about this time. And here they are. We know that whatever we put in there that comes out there, whether we can see it, that it's a Starburst or not, we know that because it came out at that certain time, it's a Starburst. And so that's what they're doing with your blood sample. So they're taking the air, the headspace above that blood, and they're putting it through a tube just like this. And they're saying at the other end, when this stuff comes out, we can tell what that is. We can tell whether that's alcohol, we can tell whether that's some sort of other contaminant, we can tell exactly what it is based on when it comes out. So that's how that works. Now the problems here are, are numerous and we can talk about those in other videos but it's very important that you understand kind of how this works because it, it, it's, not, it's not as maybe straightforward as you might have thought. Some people think it's just a breath test. Some people think it's um, you know, dipping a, a, like a swimming pool test tube into it or doing something like that. It's really not. They're not testing the blood. There's a lot of scientific principles that go into it. What happens here is very important. What's happening here is very important. There could be contamination in here. Sometimes what they'll do is they'll crimp the ends of these tubes because they're not, they're full of muck, they're full of guck, and, and basically what they need to do is cut those off. Well, that changes the retention, changes the time of retention. So now when the Starburst comes out of the other end, it's a different time. So there's a lot of issues that go into it. And then there's how they actually test the sample 
down here with an ionizer. And so that is also something that is ripe for problems as well. But this is generally how it works. If you're looking about how gas chromatography works, these are the general principles of how they test your blood and actually many other things. So if they're testing your blood for cocaine or methamphetamines, they also know when that's coming out of the other end. So this is gas chromatography in five minutes. I hope you found it was uh, helpful. If you've been charged with DUI and you wanna know a little bit more specifically about what's potentially in your blood, whether it's a prescription uh, medication or whether it's an illegal substance or whatever it is, uh, give us a call. We'll talk about how it can pl apply to your case, how the crime lab in your jurisdiction, whether it's Scottsdale, Mesa, Phoenix, how they go through this process, what their internal procedures are, where they've had major problems, like in the event of Scottsdale, where they've had major issues uh, in their past. It's all very relevant. We have different defenses and different techniques that we use for your specific case. So give our office a call. We'll schedule a free case evaluation with you. We look forward to speaking with you. Thanks for watching.